What's up? So today I'm gonna show you how to take your sketches and tool them into some leather. Some leather. Some leather. 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 I wanted it to look kind of like a like a tattoo flash sheet. But I don't know. I think they actually might make for like cool patches if I like cut them out. And I mean, I'm no professional. I mean, the last time I did leather tooling, it was in like sixth grade when I made a keychain for my dad. But I was pretty pumped with how they turned out. And like, I learned a lot of stuff. In the making so at the end of the video I'll go through like some some tips and tricks that I learned along the way with that let's, uh, let's go so first thing I did is I got a piece of paper and started sketching out some ideas I wanted to like fill a whole entire page cuz I thought that would be fun I don't know I've gotten some comments about how I should turn this into a new sticker sheet which I might just have to do cuz that would also be fun but, yeah. So once I got that done, I, I have like this leather piece that's like roughly the size of the paper. So I was just gonna take some of my favorite ones and like see what fits and put it onto this paper in the place where I want it and make it a little bit bigger. I think if it's a little bit bigger, it'd be a little bit easier to tool on the leather. So once that's done, take a sponge full of water and just smoosh it onto your leather onto the top, then let it dry till it gets to about the color it was originally. Then you're gonna take your images and tape them on top where you want them. Then I have this little tool, it has like a curved bevelly thing on one side, and the other side it has this point with a tiny little metal ball. It's like to dole out the point. And then you use that pointed edge to like trace your images onto the leather. Next what you do is you'll take this swivel knife, it's called that because it's a knife and it swivels. Yeah. And you'll just go over all the little traces, making sure not to go too deep. That will help it so when you start smashing the leather down, it will give it like clean edges. And I use that tool, the curved side, to do that. So you could use this tool, or you could use an actual tooling tool. Tooling, tooling tool. And then use a plastic camera to protect that. I ended up using this weighted plastic camera and began smooshing it in. I kind of thought of this as like sculpting. That kind of helped me figure it out. And then I used these textured tools to add texture. So like right there in the hat where the rainbow is, I had texture there. And then I used this line textured one on the brim of the hat. And I thought it like gave it a cool effect. I went over with the bevel tool a little more and then moved on to the rainbow. And I thought maybe if I had like a harder surface underneath, that would make it better. And it did. It made things a lot darker and crisper. It also protect my table because I already cracked the table. We'll just hide that there. A little. Uh, the next day, I got a piece of marble, rewetted it, and started up again. I also experimented beveling the outside of the object versus the inside. This will make a little more sense later. But for this rainbow, the main thing I wanted was the top one to be darker, the middle one a little lighter, and the bottom one even more lighter. And I got that effect by pushing harder or softer to make the letters stand out. I just recut them with a knife and then went through with that ballpoint to kind of like smoosh it. I did a similar thing with the ring, where on the fingers I beveled the outside to make them stand out. And then on the inside of the ring, I beveled the inside of it and then took a texture tool to give it that effect that it was like on the inside. The hand, I wish I wouldn't have done the outside. It makes it look like fuzzy. I don't know. Kind of like here on the razor blade, I did the inside and it gave these really crisp hard lines where the dark like fades inside the object rather than out, which I found out I liked a lot better. And all those things I learned so I could do the shoe good, I guess. Because the shoe, I treated it more like I was shading, you know? 
wherever I was using like the bevel tools or the, the tooling tools, I, I, I hit it where I would think it would be darker to give it like a shading effect and then also hit it where like a physical object would be deeper to give it like the sculpture type deal effect. The shoelaces were really fun because there was a lot of overlapping shapes and that was a, a fun thing to work with. And I'll also show you here at the end of the video kind of how I got that effect. And then the last thing that I really liked was like hand pressing in these textures. They're pretty subtle but it made for a cool effect. Added some final little details and I don't know I feel like I got a lot better the more I went. And yeah. Here's some close-ups of uh, the details and whatnot. So, cool. So, I'm giving away this little leather flash sheet. Also, the sketches. So just make sure you're signed up for giveaways on my website. I wanted to tool on this, which is a camera harness, but I didn't have time. So it'll probably be in a future video where I do that. And also speaking of not having time, I didn't have time to read all the books I wanted to read. And I know what you're thinking. Secret side angle camera. What a great segue to today's sponsor. Boo, Blinkist. Blink is the people over there, they understand that it can be hard to like find time to read an entire book. They just want you to become the best you, you can be. So what Blink has done, they made an app full of thousands of non-fiction books and like condensed it and made it into like little 15 minute little blinks. My hat. And the books they have, they hit topics like self-help, history, education, health, etc. So uh, let me show you. So I really like Blink is because, like I said, they have a bunch of different categories and a quick 15 minutes read, it can like, sound stupid, but like change an entire path. Like because of this book here, I'm actually gonna restructure my entire brand. And I mean, that was only 15 minutes and it's gonna change a huge aspect of what I think is gonna better schmood and, and, and honestly how I deliver videos to you guys. Like just today, I read these three books while I was working on that leather thing. So I'm lying, I did not read those books. I listened to them because that's also an option. And honestly, that's another thing I really like because a lot of times I'll be doing something else like driving or working. And so if I don't have time to actually read through the points, I can just click it and listen to it. So, I mean, those are three books that I really like that I recommend, especially if you're trying to, you know, launch a product or build a brand or just, you know, trying to be a more effective person. <laughs> but yeah, so I put a link below in the description of the video for the Blinkist app. And the first hundred people who sign up get a week of unlimited access free. And then at the end of that week, if you want full membership, you'll also get 25% off. So go check that out. Cool. So here's some tips I wish I would have known beforehand. Make sure you have a hard surface underneath, 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 and you should practice on like a scrap piece of leather before doing your actual piece. Make sure your design is taped exactly where you want it and don't put tape on top because it will leave a mark. You can kind of get rid of it, but not really. You'll need to wet the leather down before you trace it out, otherwise it won't leave a good mark. And then when you're cutting it out with your knife, make sure you don't cut too hard because you can cut through, like I did there. Cool. When it comes to actually tooling, like whether you use this curve thing or a tooling tool, I, I don't know, I wouldn't do the outside like there unless that's the look you're going for, like you want shading around the, all the outside. Instead what I would do is I would treat it like you were shading it, where you have like dark on the bottom, so that's on the outside of the circle, and then on the inside on the top, and then add shading where you want it. So then when it comes to overlapping shapes, this is like my favorite part, you're going to want to hit down on the side that's going like underneath the first object, and then if you want to raise up that bottom image, you're going to smush down like the background, so those four little corners right there and that will make like a cool little effect. I would also practice tooling like your textures or your backgrounds. I try to do like a gradient right there and you get that effect by going harder for to get darker and lighter to get lighter. So cool. Thanks so much guys. If you like the video, if you like me, go ahead and sub if you haven't already. And also I said the Kickstarter video was coming next, but that really is coming next this time. So look out for that. Other than that, um, 
Nothing. <laughs>